Hey, welcome to Life After Addiction Indictment. I'm your host, Steve Cloward. And today I've got a gentleman who's got a story that if you're out there and you're struggling and you think that life is tough and uh, you know, you're living in kind of the victim stance, well, I've got a big time influence or big time marketer, somebody that's written over 13 books and has over 15 companies, hundreds of employees. And I just want to welcome him to the show, Ryan. Appreciate you showing up today. Yeah, absolutely. Glad to uh, to be here. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks. And and for those that uh, don't know, it, it's Ryan Stuman, and uh, it's called the Hardcore Closer. You got to check him out at hardcorecloser.com. But Ryan, I just wanted to have you kind of talk a little bit about you know what happened. You know, you you ended up in prison, and really what what it was that you know, allowed you to get to the place you are today? Well, you know, it, <laughs> it, it, yeah, it definitely wasn't like one thing, you know, everybody's Absolutely. like, give me that. And you know, Gary Keller, the Keller Williams guy wrote the oh, book, yeah. the one thing that's real pop, but like the one thing, eh, I can't nail something down to one thing, but I can tell you, you know, I, I uh, had a rough upbringing, you know, I was uh, adopted at, at seven or eight years old. I can't remember. And, you know, I dropped out of school and got on drugs and sold drugs and ended up going to prison for a couple of years behind drugs. And then, you know, got my life together and uh, ended up going back to prison again for some shit that I, I didn't know that was illegal. And uh, as far as how guns work anyway, and, you know, just in and out of the system, I, I spent all of my 20s either in probation, parole or in prison, man. And, uh, you know, even when I was doing the right thing with my life, you know, that revolving door called me back in. Yeah. Wow. So as you were in prison, uh, you know, you were, you had some success prior to going into prison and uh, you kind of got taken advantage of, I think it was an ex-wife that uh, kind of. Well, you know, the first time I went in, I was like dirt poor, didn't have a car or a place to live or nothing. So it was like, in all reality, prison probably wasn't, in my thinking at the time, hell, it can't be worse than living on the streets, you know, turns out right. it is. Um, and, you know, the second time, like I said, I cleaned my life up. I got a job in the uh, real estate industry and was speaking on stages and doing, you know, I was doing life going to church, wasn't doing any drugs or anything. And and the cops, I, I, I did work from my house. I was one of the first people that I ever knew that could work from home. It was like 2005. And I knew how to, we'll just say like now what would be hacking into the server at work, but I knew how to get in through my home internet. I knew how to use the address to log in as if I was in the office and the boss didn't care as long as the oh, shit wow. got done. Right. So I would, I would have people come by and drop off applications and pick up contracts and real estate agents coming and dropping off earnest money checks and all these different things, you know, plus I had about 30 houses. So people were dropping off rent and shit. And the cops thought I was selling drugs, which, you know, I had the past. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it might be a real estate agent in a Mercedes Benz. Uh, and then someone that's one of my tenant in a, a, a beat up car from the hood, you know. Right. And so, I mean, it had all the characteristics of a motherfucker that didn't learn his lesson, you know. But, that's right. Uh, they kicked my door and my door was unlocked. I'm like, you guys could have knocked. You know, I wasn't even home when all this took place. Uh, but they found a gun in my house. I didn't even have any drugs or anything like that. They found a gun in there. And, you know, in Texas, you get, after five years, you get a piece of paper that says you can vote again, that you have the right to bear arms in your primary residence. So I had a gun in my house uh, and the paperwork for it. And uh, the cops arrested me for felon in possession of a firearm. I beat the case. And wow. the ATF picked, me, picked it up because they, it's almost like double jeopardy. They supersede the state. And because uh, the federal, so it's kind of like pot in Colorado, right? You, you can grow and smoke yeah. and sell, but if the DEA doesn't want you to do it, you're in trouble, right? It's, right? it's legal in the state, but it's not federally legal. So uh, felons in Texas can possess guns in their private residence, can't open carry, can't, you know, but they probably go hunting. I don't know, but it says yeah. clearly you can have a gun in your house, right, to protect yourself. And um, the feds don't recognize that. Well, I don't fucking know that because, like, who gets a who gets a notice in the mail from the feds? It's like, oh, hey, I mean, even today the the feds just passed a gun, two fucking huge gun laws, two huge gun laws. 
Jeez. And 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 the media shit that you read about, it's like, oh, they're doing us a favor. No, they're fucking not. You yeah. know, and uh, I'm, I still am a big proponent of guns. You know, I'm a big believer. Oh, yeah. it's, it's something obviously I can't fuck with anymore. But uh, I've, I've lost that right. But you know, it's it, I'm a big believer in that shit. You know, and I got a lot of friends. And, and dude, let's just all be real. If somebody, if I need a gun, I know a million motherfuckers with guns, and I could go get my hands on. So if I gotta be in a situation, I mean, it really does no good to put to take somebody's gun rights away. All you're doing is creating a criminal, in my opinion, right? And that's I totally what they did. Agree. They I took totally a guy agree. that was making seven hundred thousand dollars a year, paying tax on it, and put me in fucking prison for eighty thousand dollars a year because they didn't find any drugs when they came to my house. That's like that's why we have a national debt and fucking you know. There's a guy that's <laughs> there's a guy that they're spending eighty grand a year in prison right now. They got caught with fifteen hundred dollars worth of fucking dope. You know yep. what I mean? It's like it's just Absolutely. fucking crazy, man. Yeah, just uh, yeah, no doubt. It's that's a podcast we could talk for days about. It's it's it is a joke. Now, so you mentioned you got adopted. You know, I know you didn't have the greatest upbringing. You know, most people, even people that are you know, it had success, you know, including me. And then when I crashed and burned in 2008 and nine, ended up in federal prison, you know, I had all the reasons to come out and still be, you know, move forward and be successful. But I found my stuck, myself stuck for a while. And I look at you and have watched your evolution. Really, I've, I've paid attention to you for just over six years. And I've watched your evolution. But did you have a mentor? Where did you get the mindset that allowed you to to do what you did, you know, and then have the crash, um, and and the second time in prison, you know, and still came out swinging. But did you have a mentor, you know, growing up, or did you just have that, you know, that kind of in your DNA, and you just want you're just a fighter, obviously. I mean, I've like I said, I've seen you go from, you know, probably a quarter of a million dollars to over ten, you know, probably seven eight digits now. I'm assuming. Um, so it's been it's been incredible to watch your journey, not only in business and success, but I've, I've I'll be honest with you, I even watched how you've grown, you know, because you have to have a level of polarization, um, I believe, because you want to really attract those that you want to do business with, I guess, and, and you don't want to mess and waste time with those you don't. But man, you've just been an incredible leader in the marketplace now in online marketing and lead gen. Um, and it's just been incredible to watch that journey, you know, like I say, both in business, but also, um, you as an individual, um, and I really respect you a great deal. And you've had a huge impact on my life, um, from a business standpoint and just watching you grow and, and it's motivated me to want to continue to invest in myself and grow. And I've invested in some of your courses and been to a mastermind, but did you just have that naturally in you or where did you get the mindset? Well, you know, I don't want to arm anybody with an excuse, but the best Thank that you. I can trace it back and, and, and the best that I can trace it back is that my, and I remember this when I was a little kid, right? So my mom's father was a banker. He owned three or four small savings and loans. And I was born in, in uh, the eighties, right? So I was, I was born in 79. So I lived through the eighties. So this is probably 82, 83, somewhere around then. Um, right. And my father's dad was a uh, uh he owned factories okay so he owned he was an entrepreneur he owned his own business so we got both of my parents parents were entrepreneurs they owned their own business they didn't work for anybody and i saw my grandfather be very wealthy um like a motherfucker owned banks you know what i'm saying like yeah. you know, anybody that owns banks got a dollar or two you know and That's so right. uh they had you know we lived in a hood ass town but they had a you know what would be a shithole house today but it was nice for that town back then you know what i mean and, oh yeah i mean we're the, we, i mean he's got a bank in like a town of like you know two thousand people you know and he's right. got but he's got three or four of these banks right well so story is in like 85 86 the snl's crashed okay so here's i think an important lesson i want to share with people so my grandfather he's balling and he's, you know, driving a different car every other month and shit. I guess I kind of got the same affliction there, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, and, and, you know, just living high on the hog and it gets swept out from under him. Well, he's the banker in a small town. And when the savings and loans crashed, 
the whole fucking town hates us all of a sudden. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, fuck, we lost their money and shit, right? These farmers are like, they owe money to the bank. The bank's now owned by the Resolution Trust Company and all this shit, right? And I don't know this at six years old, but believe me, at right. fucking 41, I know exactly what happened, right? Especially yeah. as a one of the premier business coaches in the fucking world and, and somebody who knows history. Now I understand what happened. Right. But as a kid, you just like, shit, we lost it all. What the fuck are we moving into a trailer house for? Right. Like, <laughs> right. you just like, but as a kid, you're like, all right, this is a cool new place. Let me go get my hot wheels. And, you know, like you, <laughs> right. kids are really different, you know, but, but so that crashes that caused my grandfather's business to crash too, which causes my mom and dad to fight. They end up getting a divorce. Uh, you know, dad runs off, never see the dude ever fucking for like 19 or 20 years later. And, uh, you know, he goes on, my, my dad is like a world champion horse person. So, you know, so he's obviously got some winning in his blood, but he works for somebody. My mom's like a secretary at a mortgage company now or something like that. So, you know, it's not like, it's like my grandparents were entrepreneurs and my parents, they must've played it safe because they saw some wild times with my grandparents being entrepreneurs but it, I will say in the only excuse I'm going to arm people with is it must be in my DNA. But the good yeah. news is I've already been through that. See, my grandfather went through that crash and then see, he was in the military. So when he lost the bank, he used the Montgomery GI Bill. He was in the Navy to go and get his PhD from uh, Texas A&M. And then he ran, he just retired a couple of years ago, but he ran the uh, Methodist uh, Boys Home in Waco, right? Okay. And so, you know, like basically what I'm saying is when business failed for him, instead of going, all right, well, what's next? He went, I'm going to, I'm going to take the path of least resistance. I'm going to go live on the government's money, get my degree. And then I'm going to go find a job somewhere. Cause he didn't do that just to be a teacher. That was the job that was offered to him. Right. And it's yeah. a noble ass job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He became oh, a yeah. doctor, his PhD and shit like that, but scared the fuck out of him. My other grandfather, he ain't got no damn sense on my dad's side. So like <laughs> he never had a job in his whole life. You know what I mean? So I, yeah. I'm more like him. But I've also seen my other grandfather ride these ups and downs, and he's had way better ups than downs, right? Downs are always temporary. And I've seen this in, in real life growing up, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. It's like, you know, one minute fucking they're on top of the world, and in the next minute they're having to sell some shit, man, because they're hustling up for the next venture or whatever, or some shit didn't work out. And, and I see that in my life a lot now, too. But I, but at first, you get nervous. You're like, you know, I started my first business. My business partner stole from me as fuck, right? This was, yeah. you know, centuries ago at this point. But it's like, oh, shit, man. And then I'm like, but, but, but I did have a little success. If I could just do that without the business partners, let me remove the, the X factor out of the equation. And then, you know, I'm going to try it again. And so for me, one of the big benefits of being a two-time fucking felon is the fact that I can't get a job, so I got to go fucking make something happen. Yeah. You know, everything seems like a curse at the time. Like, fuck, I got to go back 15 months in prison. But you know what? Uh, if I would have stayed married to that chick that left me, like you mentioned earlier, like my life would probably be miserable. I see her around town every now and then. That ain't what I'm trying to get down with anymore, you know? Right. And and uh, personality-wise or looks-wise, right? Like, I would have never met my wife and have the four kids that I have right now. I would have never, you know, I, I wouldn't have been forced to fucking figure this shit out, man, because, you know, you, you say you've been following for six years. I've been doing this since 2008, since I got out of federal prison. And yeah. it, it's it's nice over the last three years, people like fucking Stuman's like this guy, you know, I mean, it's crazy because I can't go anywhere without getting recognized. I was just in Mexico in a private residence and someone was at the hotel at the bottom of the thing and took a picture and sent it to a friend of mine going, hey, ain't this your boy? I'm like, fuck, I can't hide anywhere. You know, <laughs> well, I go to says, my... Yeah, that says a ton, you know. No, I, I love it, but I'm just yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that I hear, all I hear that you. came because I can't, I couldn't get a job. I had to create something, right? Yeah. And in the beginning, I'm no different than anybody else. Like, well, what the fuck do I create? So I started this internet marketing. I was like, cool, I guess I'm going to start writing. I can't write for shit. So at the time, I can now. I was going to say, you're damn I good at it now. I just, I just started doing it. It's like, all right, well, there's this podcast thing. I guess I'll try it. You know, it's like, hey, I've been writing these blog posts for a while. I could probably write a fucking book at this point. I'll try that. You know, and not all of it worked out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> like some of it, but, but it's all out there. And this is what I was telling a guy, a uh, dear friend of mine, that, that I was with in St. Louis the other day, he said, you have, when's the last time you paid for ads? And I said, uh, uh, it was March of 2019 the last time we ran paid advertising. Wow. And he said, um, uh, okay. 
So how do you figure that you guys are getting, you know, 100,000 leads a year? You know, how are you guys doing that without running ads? You really don't market or email. So how the hell does that happen? And I said, man, for 11 years, I created thousands of pieces of content a year. And some of them get circulated and, and repurposed and, and by syndicate sites and shit in other countries. So if you Google my name or if you uh, search Hardcore Closer or any of that, there's like 70 something thousand different results out there. If each one of those things that I created just generates one fucking lead a year, we're good. Oh, so you know, but that's not but that's what people say, man. You know, I want all of that. And then they go broke trying to make that happen in 24 months. You can't do that in 24 months. You just can't do it. Even yeah. if you pay a bunch of people to do the shit work for you, you still can't do it, right? So I've done something that's just taken this long, but I built it the right way. And because of that, I know when somebody's full of shit. Like I've made the money, I've done the deals, I've created it, I've racked up the fucking numbers. I know, I like I, we always say, I've dug this hole with the shovel. I know what the fuck it feels yeah. like to dig the hole. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks are out there and you don't ever know who you can trust. But uh, for me, <clears throat> I know right off the jump because I've done all this shit. There ain't nothing yeah. in this world that I haven't done. And a lot of people are doing shit that I invented, which is awesome, right? I mean, yeah. that's the whole point of- well, That's of the best that compliment helping. in the world right there. Yeah. You know, there's a few things I heard there that are powerful. You know, number one, you obviously took action. That's the biggest thing. Um, you, you know, you never made excuses. You put your back against the and wall. You got to. Yeah. You, you got, yeah. And in fact, that's what I used to always say when I, I ran my dad's full service car wash. And, you know, when that chain breaks on a winter day and you got 25 cars in line and 30 over the vacuum bay, you know, your back's against the wall. That's when it doesn't matter what you're wearing. You're jumping in that pit and you're freaking fixing that chain and making it happen. So number one, consistency was big time. It doesn't happen overnight, you know, and that's, that's frankly what kind of screwed me up that I had him in, in my brain that was messing me up after I crashed. I forgot just being stupid, frankly, that I didn't build the biggest appraisal firm in the state of Utah and have an importing company from, you know, uh, international company overnight, but it seemed like it, you know, seemed like it. Yeah. yeah. And so I, 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 I didn't stay focused. And back then I didn't have all the distractions and I allowed myself to get distracted. So, you know, you went all in on you and you were consistent. We can definitely, you know, I think that's another big lesson that people don't really realize the majority of people out there are just going along with whatever life brings, you know, we have the ability to create our future, create the life that we want, no matter what. Um, and you know, you're in a, you epitomize all those things. And so it's been, you know, it's, it's, it's been awesome to watch. You've been, like I said, a great example for anybody out there that, you know, is stuck or frustrated if COVID's kicked your butt, whatever it is, you know, if you're a felon and, you know, you want to take control of your life and reclaim your life again, you need to start following Ryan. You know, he had a huge impact on me because I learned about a lot of the, the marketing methods he used that have allowed me to build another one of my businesses you know, generating leads and then introducing paid ads. And so I think, you know, finding somebody that has what you want and modeling after what they're doing, you know, and, and, and I know you, you've always invested in yourself as well. Um, hundreds of thousands, maybe up to a million dollars nowadays, knowing kind of mentors that you pay. Um, and people got to understand that that's, you know, the biggest investment we can make is on our, on our, on ourselves, you know, you know, Warren Buffett says you can't tax it or take it away. You know, if you, Jeez, that's if you so true. make an investment on yourself, <clears throat> you know, for, for me, the driving force, you know, was the original in, and I say this in all the time, but you have to, you have fuel that gets you started and then refuel. So like, if you, if you're trying to start the grill, you might drop a little bit of lighter fluid, but once those charcoals are gone, you don't drop lighter fluid on it again. Right. Yeah. But you, you got to put a little lighter fluid on it to get it started. Right. For most of us, especially with the name like life after addiction and indictment, um, I can just assume there's probably a lot of quote unquote degenerates like me on here. Right. Past degenerates. <laughs> right. And me. <laughs> and, and that fire for us really truly needs to be that, that, that lighter fluid for us that gets us started needs to be redemption. And what I mean Amen. by redemption 
is the every motherfucker that saw you go to prison and thought, well, that's the best that motherfucker will ever be. Now he's a convict the rest of his life. Let that be some fuel for you. Not yeah. fuel to go out and do more dirty, illegal shit, but fuel to fucking prove that you got the shit to do the thing within the rules of the game too, okay? Yeah. But after a while, you prove your parents wrong, you prove your ex-wife wrong, you prove your friends from the neighborhood wrong, and what happens is they go from hating you to say, no, I've known that motherfucker forever, man. You know, I can tell you yeah. stories about him. They act like they're your fucking friend, right? They but at that point, you can't be mad at them anymore. That fuel, like when the when the wife left me, that was fuel for me to get my shit together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, man, I'm not going to let that bitch left the worst version of me. She left me when I was in prison. That's the absolute worst. She's thinking, oh, I... I was with him when he was at his best, and now he's a loser that he's gone to prison. <laughs> no, bitch, you left the worst fucking version of me. You know what I mean? Like, and and I wanted to prove that, right? Yeah. And so, and I didn't have to call her up, right? You know, I don't have to do shit now. She's a fucking, I'm a household name. She's in the mortgage industry, right? I'm sure she has to hear my name every fucking day in that industry, for right? Sure, and so, yes. and, and she works for people that are fucking my clients. You know what I mean? Like, I, they know, you, you yeah. know, it's like, small world when when i've been doing this as long as i have but after a while like i'm not mad at her no more i'm not mad at my parents no more my my you know family or any of that right so so that lighter fluid burns off so how do i keep them coals burning right so how do i keep the charcoals going so that's when you got to refuel it, it first you got to be you, the fuel is redemption right y'all yeah. motherfuckers didn't think i could do it and now i'm here but after you fucking said it once you shut the fuck up and keep that fire going and the way to shut the fuck up and keep that fire going is to find some more fuel. And for me, that other fuel was a big mission. Okay, I did it. Okay, I did it. I made it. I got it. Now, how can I fucking get others to do the same thing? Right? Because I know people are always like, you know, well, this dude, like, not, not necessarily towards me, but I see this on the ads that go through my newsfeed all the time. If this dude's so rich, why is he selling a course? Probably because he's got the fucking, the urge to give contribution. Yeah. You know, like, like if you, and if you know how good it feels to fucking walk into your garage and go, which exotic car do I want to drive today? Or to be able to tell your kids you can have whatever the fuck you want, right? When you, when you are able to like literally say that, you're like, I want to show other people how to live this life. Not just money, but respect. Right. Not just respect, but being fit uh, physically. Not just being fit physically, but having relationships like nobody else has with business partners, family members, your children. Like, I want to show people what's possible if you're just willing to put in the work. But the problem is I don't have a secret magic bullet formula. All I've got is 11 goddamn hard years of fucking work of doing shit consistently without ever fucking quitting you know like yeah. i started a podcast in 2011 nobody listened to that motherfucker until two years ago nobody nobody like man maybe a thousand <laughs> people a month now the motherfucker gets three million listens a month but had yeah. i quit in 2014 five fucking years into doing it i wouldn't be here with three million people man but i knew and this is this is just what I'm I'm stupid enough to believe. I'm stupid enough to believe that I'm gonna do the work despite despite the results that I'm getting today. Because the work I did in 2014 is just now fucking Damn paying up. me in 2021, right? Yeah. But had I not done that work in 15, 16, 17, and 18, it's not gonna carry me till 2030. And if I don't do the work today, it's not gonna carry me to 20 fucking 40. And so, but the problem is we we oftentimes we need that. And I get it, we gotta have money. It's ranked up there with fucking oxygen. I get it, right? Like yeah. number two behind yeah. oxygen is money because you can't get water and food for free. You gotta have it, right? Yeah. And so the thing is, you know, we get so we gotta have this, but you gotta remember, like I also shopped at fucking Kohl's. I still only wear a $7 shirt and fucking van and shoes all the time. Like, like I shopped at Kohl's, like I did everything I could to fucking cut my stuff. I, 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 I bought a, you know, I was making $300,000 a year and I bought a $115,000 house. Right. And I mortgaged it. It was like $700 a month. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and my friends would be like, damn, why you got such a small house? It's like, man, now they probably wonder why I got such a big house, but That's I had right. to fucking go yeah. through that shit. You know what I mean? I lived in that house for five years and sold it for 165, took that money and bought a $500,000 house with the down payment parlay that shit you know but yeah. most people aren't willing to fucking do that stuff they want the big house immediately and as soon as something goes wrong it's like fuck we can't afford rent this month it's foreclosure city 
Yeah. That's the other thing. And I'll say this and then, and then we can start winding down, but so the, the fuel and refuel principle is important, especially for those of you that are still trying to get, that are still burning on lighter fluid, but you should be burning on refuel by now. Um, the other thing is with money, I think you got to take you, you, once you get it, you got to take care of yourself first, right? Like, you Thank know, you. you get a little money, you, you, you wanted a dream car, dream vacation, dream house or whatever. It's, it's better to buy that than buy your mama something first. Cause you know what, if shit gets fucked up, then you're going to be mad at your mama cause she's living fucking rent free <laughs> and you're struggling. Right. Yeah. So you got to take care of yourself first, right? You got to get not everything you've ever wanted in your dreams, but you've got to like my clients, once they, you know, they make five, $6 million in a year, they, they go buy their first Ferrari or their first Lamborghini or whatever. I've got probably 150 clients with exotic cars at this point because they're making massive amounts of money, but they're, they're making that, they're buying that car and going, all right. You know, most of them trade back out of them and end up getting something else. It's just like something that they needed to check off their bucket yeah. list that they had yeah. one for a year <laughs> or whatever. Right. Right. But, but the, the thing is they got to get that car and take care of their inner need. If they're a car guy, some of them, it's a boat, some of them, you know, whatever it is. Right. But they got to be able to take care of that inner need before they can say, okay, I got what I want. All right. So now what can I do now? I can help uh, other people get what they want, including my clients and employees. You know, I'm on a mission right now to where I'm not building a business anymore. I, I'm, I'm building Another wealth, one. not just for my clients. I'm building wealth for my employees. Yeah. You know, I've got employees that are coming up on about to have earned millions of dollars from me. Uh, they're like, I got two of them that are coming up on the seven figure point pretty soon. And I manage them more on their money than I manage them on the shit that they do for my business. You know, hey, That's start cool. a fucking stock account. Hey, go buy a goddamn house. Quit renting. Hey, go buy a fucking car. Write it off as a work vehicle. Quit using Uber, right? Like, you know, teaching them, hey, here's how you invest in these restaurants with me. Like, because, you know, I've got a uh, my VP, him, him and I own a software company together, you know? And, um, and so I'm, I'm just teaching these guys and the ladies too how to manage their stuff because I've already got it, right? So that's why I said yeah. step one is get it. Step two is help somebody else get it. Yeah, you know, and and but you got to get it first because they won't believe you if you ain't got it, right? How can you help somebody right. else if you haven't done it for yourself? That's right. We can't take care of them until yeah, it's just like putting that oxygen mask on you first, you know. So that's yeah. powerful. And you got great, you know. I know some of the people you're talking about. You got great people, and and they 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 don't just talk the talk; they walk the walk, and that's 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 important. So, well, I appreciate it. Where can you know? There's so many things that I want to tell people about where to find you and what you know that. To maybe to invest in, but where can people find you? Learn about you know the G code. Um, really, just googling your name is going to do a lot. But is there anything specific that you want to you know tell people where to find you? Yeah, probably the best place is uh, Instagram and Facebook, and you can just type in my name, Ryan Stuman, and the profiles that are really mine because I'm in a position where <laughs> a lot of other shit pops up, uh, yeah. but they have blue checks, so the, you, you'll know if it's really my account. If it's the one with the blue check next to it on Facebook and on um, anywhere you go to type in my name, I'm verified on all platforms, but uh, Instagram and Facebook are really where I focus my time. So, you know, cool. I answer DMS on there. If you send me stupid shit, I don't reply to it or answer it. But you know, if you got something that's, that's uh, worth reading, then there's a good shot that you'll get a reply back from me. So, but you know, my, my goal isn't to come on the podcast and, tell you what I do or sell you, but I right. think if you follow me for a little while on social media, you'll find out if we're kindred spirits or not and want to be a part of what we're building over here, you know? Amen. That's what I did, you know, and I could, yeah, it's, it's great. And I appreciate your time. Um, you know, you, you, I, I know you're focused on and you're passionate about, and you're totally sincere about impacting other people's lives. Now that's, that's your mission. I, I know it. And, uh, you know, if you're, it's gotta be man. And you, it's not easy, you know, somebody, I was in St. Louis a couple of days ago and somebody asked me, they said, um, we were sitting around talking and they said, man, you know, what are you, what are you at war with every day? What do you fight? And I was like, man, you don't know what it's like to, to be in my position. I'm not this guy that's like, you know, I, I have to be a certain way. I, I'm in a leadership position. So I have to literally live my life like cameras are on me at all times. And like I mentioned earlier, oftentimes they fucking are. Yeah. And so that means that, you know, I can't be getting drunk out of control in public. You know, I can't get domestic disturbances at my house, either my kids, my wife or myself or parties or any of that shit. Like I have to be an example. And that's not easy, man. It's like taking, and I'm not comparing myself, right? Cause I'm definitely fucking, 
I got a kid on the way, so I'm not a priest, but I'm saying it's like taking the vow of priesthood to do really what I'm doing here because I'm saying, hey, I, I'm going to live uh, my life this way in, in the very big eye of the public, and I got to be the example. I can't be the guy that's like, oh, yeah, but I've seen that motherfucker after hours, man, and we were doing blow. Right. Or, you know, I went with him in Vegas one time, and he had like three chicks with him, and he didn't think he saw me. Like, I can't, I can't fucking fall victim to that shit, man. I'm, I'm carried on. And it's not a pedestal like they don't expect me to fuck up, right? There's people that be like, oh, I knew it would happen, right? But it's my job to make sure that I'm the fucking leader that I say that I can be so that I can raise up other leaders to fucking be the example, man. And I've seen in my lifetime so many people fall for that, whether they were pastors or politicians and yeah. they fell to, to, you know, bullshit. It could have totally been fucking avoided. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and, uh, but it's out there every day. Yeah. And, and that's probably the, really the, the hardest thing that to, to fight at this level, but I really believe it, you know, and I'm in, I won't say it's a sacrifice because life is good over here, but you know, I've made a decision to act and be a certain way and uh, it's not fucking easy, but I've been doing a good job of it for a long time, you know? Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say is, you know, I've, it, you know, the consequences of not, but I also believe you're to the place where you've made that choice regardless of knowing that that's the way you need to be, you know? Yep. And so and that's, what's, that's what makes you who you are. You know, you're not just doing it to be fake to do it because you, you need to. So, so yeah, Ryan, I appreciate your time. And, and for those that, uh, you know, if you're in sales, uh, whatever it is, do you want to take control of your life, get in sales? He's got a phenomenal Facebook group. I think you're over hundred K members now, aren't you, Ryan? I think we're at 90. So we're close okay, enough, close enough to probably say that. If so I was a good so internet marketer, I'd be like, yeah, we're over a hundred, but I'm just a realist. So I think well, we're if, you didn't have, if you didn't have 15 <laughs> companies, you probably could get there too really fast. But, but uh, yeah, that's, I, I've watched that grow like crazy and it's added a lot of value to my life. You know, everything's about network. Everything's about relationships. I know Ryan believes that. And, you know, if, if you're not sure where to get started, jump in that group. I can tell you, there's great people in there that will give you all the help. All you got to do is go in there and contribute ask some, you know, questions that are powerful, not any lame stuff, and you'll get respect and people will help you out. So it's a great community to get involved with and uh, hope all is well there in Texas. You guys made it through that crazy weird storm. It sounds like Ryan that affected you and your family. No, nah, not at all, man. It's about 80 degrees yeah. here today, man. We well, Yeah, it's awesome <laughs> now. So, well, cool. Well, thanks a lot. I'll have all your info in the show notes. So if people want to check out certain uh, places to find you, I'll have all that as well. And uh, be safe and keep making an impact, brother. I appreciate you. Thanks, man. Later. You got it. See you. Hey, thanks, Ryan.